So this happened to me on Thursday, April 25th, and I still can't shake off how terrifying and strange it was. So I was home alone, getting ready for my 12 o'clock college class that morning, and I opened my blinds to let some natural light in. I glanced out my window to see a man in his mid-30s wearing a baseball cap roaming around my property, with his hands on his hips, walking with a lot of weird confidence. Our yard is kind of like a cliff, and it looks over onto our five acres of property down below. I live in the PNW, so it's a pretty scenic view. I was really confused and thought maybe it was a worker that my mom had hired for our renovations on the house, just admiring the view. I'm a little bit uncomfortable at this point because the dude walks to the side of my house out of sight. I head upstairs to see him now roaming around my front yard in my driveway, looking at things, checking out my house, etc. He still hasn't seen me at this point. I call my dad and ask him if we have hired anyone to come by the house, and he says not that he knows of and tells me he's going to call my mom and ask her, and then call me back. I'm waiting for the call when I notice this strange dude's car. It's a white Honda with no license plates, just parked parallel to my front door. The dude still hasn't seen me and he's still wandering around, so I take this as an opportunity to remember that we have a security system, and I armed it. So if he did try to break in, he would immediately alert the police. If this was some sort of professional or worker, he would have rang my doorbell or knocked at least once. He did neither. Just then I get a call back from my dad saying neither him or my mom hired anyone to come by today and that I needed to call our local police station immediately. I went back downstairs after making sure to lock every door and window upstairs and called my city's police station. I explained to a woman on the other end what is happening and she decides that she's not going to send an officer out and instead gives me a number to call their emergency dispatch line and told me to talk to them. I called the number she gave me and immediately I get an automated voice message saying, Thank you for calling my town's name, non-emergency hotline. Nobody's available to take your call right now. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. At this point, I'm really irritated because 15 minutes has passed, and thus the weird dude is still lurking around my house while I'm home alone, and apparently that wasn't enough to warrant an emergency to the lady I called at my local police department. I hung up and decided to call 911. After getting in touch with the 911 operator, I was asked a series of questions about his appearance before they would even alert officers near me to start heading towards my house. The whole thing seemed really weird. Nobody was in a hurry to have officers come up to my place when I was a younger girl home alone with a strange dude. I asked the officer if I could stay on the line with her when she finally, after what seemed like forever, alerted the police to come to where I was. She agreed and I went back upstairs to check on the weird guy. And now he's sitting in his unplated Honda, either listening to a radio show extremely loudly, or on a phone call with someone through his car. It was a very prominent loud male voice coming from his car. Then all of a sudden, I hear the tone you hear when someone hangs up on you, and the operator was no longer on the line. I was really confused when my thoughts were interrupted by an unrecognized phone number calling me. I assumed it was the operator calling me back, so I picked it up. Instead, I was greeted by really creepy heavy breathing. I'm not sure whose it was, but it really freaked me out. I hung up immediately and dialed back 911. I had been pretty calm up to this point, but the phone call put me in panic mode. I got on the phone with another operator who already knew my situation and address before I even could explain it to her. She said the cops were on their way. 20 minutes had passed at this point. The dude is still here in his car, and the cops aren't. Keep in mind, I live in a smaller town, so there's no reason why it took the cops as long as it did to come down. Finally, this dude is leaving my driveway right as the cops pull in, and they stop him and ask him a few questions. A cop then comes to my door and hands me a sketching looking flyer saying, it was just a landscaper. He said he had an appointment. I was really relieved and irritated that it was just a dude my mom had hired, until I realized it wasn't. I called my mom back and said, the cop said it was just a landscaper that you hired, and that he even had an appointment. My mom replies with, I can assure you, we never hired a landscaper. We don't even need one. This happened in the early 2000s, and I was around 12 years old. My dad had passed away about two years before leaving my mom, sister, and myself. To help me cope with my father's passing, my mom took me to the animal shelter to pick out a dog, since having a large dog was something that I've always wanted. In one of the cages was a small shepherd slash husky, huddled in the corner, that I right away fell in love with. When this incident happened, when this incident happened, he was about one years old, 90 pounds, and my best friend. My mom worked nights and my older sister taking advantage that mom wasn't home would constantly leave me alone. I didn't mind though because then she couldn't boss me around since when she was home, she would try to be my mom, 
telling me what to do and when to go to bed. We lived in a small middle class suburb with a low crime rate, so I wasn't scared to be home alone. I was sitting in the living room playing video games and got up heading to the kitchen to grab a drink. In the kitchen, I had a clear view of the back door and could see the garage open. Thinking that I just left it open after putting my bike away, I headed out to the door to close it. My dog was sleeping in the basement since he liked to lay on the cool floor during the summer, and I didn't want to take him out with me. I step out the door and make it about five feet from it, when I notice in the darkness a crouched shadow moving in the garage. I froze trying to get my eyes to adjust to make out what the shadow was. It finally hit me when I saw the figure stand up and turn towards me. I was terrified and felt like I had been glued to the spot. I knew that this person could see me since the back porch light was shining above me. At that moment, the figure started running towards me. I was too scared to move and let out more of a yelp than a scream, but that was all it took for my dog to hear me, and the next thing I hear is him behind me snarling and growling. I could make out it was a man, but not features, when he now froze seeing the 90-pound beast behind me. He turned and ran for the back fence with my dog right behind him. The guy made it to the fence, and since it was only about four feet, he hopped right before my dog got to him. After he got away, my dog came running back to me, and we went inside where I barricaded the doors. I don't know why, but I didn't call the cops and never told my mom or sister what happened. One thing that bothered me was that he had to have known I was inside, since the lights were on and the blinds open. So why take the risk to hit a house when someone was clearly home? The next morning after my mom was home, I went outside to finally close the garage and noticed that what he had been going through was my dad's toolbox. I locked up the garage and never told anyone about what happened. I walked my dog to McDonald's and got him a burger and ice cream cone for being my hero. My parents divorced when I was in the 8th grade, and after my dad moved out, my mom was very single and ready to mingle, so she often left me home alone. I would usually have someone stay the night on nights I knew my mom wasn't coming home, so I wasn't totally alone. So one night my friend and I, who I'll call Jesse for the story, was staying the night and for some reason we had the best internet connection in the garage, so we were in there just messing around on MySpace and such when we started hearing what sounded like two people talking. Jesse and I stopped talking and were trying to hear what the people were saying. We got up and stood by the garage door, but we still couldn't make it out, so we went inside and looked through the peephole on my front door. There were two men standing in my driveway by my garage looking around. I immediately freaked out because they weren't standing on the sidewalk or anything. They were standing by my garage like they lived at my house. I stood there watching them for a minute before one of them started walking up to the door. I quickly but very quietly checked to make sure both locks were locked and looked back out the peephole. The man was leaning over the side railing on the porch trying to look into my mom's bedroom window. I instantly signaled to Jesse to go get knives and be super quiet. I looked back outside and the two men were back by the garage talking. Jesse asked what had happened and I just told her to go make sure the doors were locked while I kept watch. She came back quickly and we switched. She kept watch while I looked for the house phone. This was before it was the norm for young teens to have cell phones. All of a sudden she says, they're leaving. My heart sank because something on my gut told me they weren't. Without even thinking I asked, did you lock the side door in the garage? And she said she didn't. I took off through the kitchen to the garage just as I heard our side gate open. I made it to the door and locked the deadbolt before I could get to the doorknob lock and as soon as I flipped the lock, the doorknob twisted. I thought I was going to puke. I grabbed the handle and locked it before running back inside and locking the garage door. I ran to the back door and at that point just started yelling, LOCK THE WINDOWS! My back door had these sheer curtains over them, where you were still able to see inside and outside, and before I was able to make it to lock the door, I saw someone walking up the back porch. I jumped behind the couch and watched as he tried to open the back door, before the second guy followed. Jessie came walking into the living room, and I grabbed her and pulled her down behind the couch with me. We both just sat there in silence, terrified, watching these two guys trying to figure out how to get in. I started to cry and Jessie was just sitting there, shaking. After what seemed like forever, they walk off the back porch and into the backyard. We heard them banging around before we saw them walk back by the porch and outside the gate. I ran to the front and looked through the peephole again, and saw them walk across the street and get into a car. I told Jesse they were gone and we both burst into tears and just started hugging each other. We called her aunt and she came and picked us up and took us to her house where we stayed the night there. We never told anyone because we thought we would be in trouble for some reason, but after that, I didn't stay home alone for years. 
and even at 25, I still get scared when it's just me and my daughter home alone while my husband is at work, or the rare occasion when he goes out with friends. 